praise the Lord, saints. This is a possible bit of a chance this morning. Welcome everyone to Soren Eagle Ministries, wherever you may be today. Uh, we're coming from Scottsdale, Arizona, Echo Ridge, always on Mountain Time. Uh, Prophet Linda, Prophet Melissa, and Pastor Edward Chant. He would be here today, but I just feel a very pressing message that God wanted me to give. And so I asked them if I could just go ahead and give it today. Uh, and so I, I want to do that. But this is pray this morning that God would have our hearts open and our minds to receive what God is saying. Father, we come before you today. <coughs> we ask you, Almighty God, that Lord, that you would open our hearts and minds to what you're speaking to the church today. Lord, that we could understand the time is near, Lord. Things are passing away. Lord Jesus, we need to be about the Father's business. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. We ask all of this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Again, this is Apostle Edward Chance coming from Swinninger Ministries in Scottsdale, Arizona. I want you to stick with me today uh, and just listen to what God is saying. I'm going to rehearse a little something, a few things that God has given but I really want you to pay attention to what God is saying because it refutes <coughs> sometimes a lot, of, a lot of people are saying in ignorance that they don't even understand. And uh, so I, third, one Friday morning, the Lord woke me up at 7 a.m. and he spoke these words, warning to America. Whoa, warning to America. I heard these words so loud in my spirit I, this happened 7 a.m. July 15, 2022. I heard these words and I immediately began to intercede to the Lord and talk to him. That means great uh, sorrow and distress coming upon America. He talks about impending danger. Judgment is coming upon America for our sins, for turning away from God. I've never really he taught a message quite like this. I've spoken of things that God has given in times past, but I'm talking to a nation right now. I'm talking to God's people that we need to pay attention. We need to bring some changes in our lives. So I'm going to read one scripture out of Isaiah 18 and 1. This is the prophet Isaiah in his day. I was with Jeremiah, was with uh, uh, some others that were walking with God. And if you read the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, uh, you also see where God, matter of fact, we just might do that today. Woe to the land of shatter, shatter, shattering wings, which is beyond the rivers of the Ethiopia. Now, God was given uh, Isaiah a look down the future of America, and I'm sure he did not understand it, and did not see the young, nonetheless, because he's a prophet of God, he spoke these things, maybe not even understand them. And if you uh, look at everything, I've studied this, look at everything uh, fr from e Ethiopia, uh, with the rivers and so forth, it would be America because we are west of Ethiopia. No other, no other country, no other nation fits this scripture no other not russia not china only america and uh, so amos says this in 3 7 and we know this scripture but i'm going to use it again because i'm sounding the trumpet today of a woe of judgment to america and you and i live in america today uh you may say well i don't have anything to worry about well you live in america you better you better you better you better you better you better pay attention Amos 3, 7 says this. Now this is a warning. And never gives any prophet or any man or woman of God any pleasure to preach anything like this. It's not something you rejoice about. It is something that really, really touches your heart. Surely the Lord will do nothing. But he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. I'm hopefully that other prophets or apostles uh, may be hearing the same thing this morning. If not, I'm saying what I'm hearing from God. 
Amen. And so Amos 3 and 7 says, God speaks to the prophets to reveal things. The people will not have an excuse and say, I didn't know. I didn't hear that. God's speaking to tell the body of Christ, the nation, hey, you better, you better wise up. Then again, here again, I'm saying God's talking. God, God's using the prophet's voice. Amen. But God is putting his words in their mouth to do the talking. As he said to Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10, Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words. You get that? God said, I put my words. It's not a man or woman words. It's God's words. Yeah. Amen. That's found in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms. Now, God said he did it. He didn't say an organization did it. Organizations notorious for appointing people. But God said, I appoint. Amen. So today, I appoint you, you over nations and kingdoms to uproot, tear down, to, and to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Now, you might ask, how is a prophet going to destroy and overthrow by speaking the divine word of God, the prophetic word of God, that God is going to be the one that does it. Amen. Just like Jeremiah saw God send Babylon, Babylon to destroy Israel. Amen. But he it was the one that God chose to speak the word of God. Now, I'm saying this because in July the 15th, 2022, the Lord said to me, Whoa, whoa. Whoa, I'm going to say whoa, whoa, amen, to the land of shattering wings. In other words, judgment coming to America. Uh, verse 12 says this, because he asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Okay, I see what you said, Lord, because you spoke it. And so the Lord said to me, you have seen correctly. Uh, so I'm saying to you this morning, I'm seeing correctly what God is saying. Okay, because God sent it. God's the one that's showing it. So I see correctly. For I am watching, now God says, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Now get that. God said, I'm going to be the one that's going to fulfill this word. It's been spoken, it's been released, the trumpet has gone out, but I'm going to be the one that's going to, re I'm going to be the one that allows the enemy to come. I'm going to release the enemy. Did you get that? And so, I know America has great military might and power. I know we have bases and military all over the world, and thank God for that. But that's not enough. My wife and I saw the, the great gigantic angel descending behind Pike's Peak when we in Colorado. Amen. And I, I pray that that angel, that, that mighty archangel, whoever he is, will remain protected over Pike's Peak. Amen. Because that's one of our military forces that sees all over the world what's going on. We don't hear anything about it, but people know that. Amen. So I want to say today, and I want to say today we need to pray for our president as he's overseas uh, trying to uh, cause things to work together. I would not want his job today. It's easy to criticize. Amen. But you need to get in his shoes and walk as a 79-year-old man this morning trying to do his very best for this nation. Mm -hmm. You want to think about that. Have you bothered to pray for him? Mm -hmm. Have you bothered to pray for him? Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to say that this morning, uh, even though we, and thank God we do have uh, military power today. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that. The very thing to stand the hand of God, not to stand the hand of the enemy this morning, is because of our military might, because of NATO, because of things and so forth. Amen, because of the leadership of this nation. But we don't know where that is going to stop. Amen. Now, I want to say to you, the natural and the supernatural, God showed me back in October 26, uh, 2015. Now, these things we've already, we've already talked about briefly. But listen, and I was, I was just debating with God about this. Here's what God said to me. God says, everything that I've given you, these messages over the years, these are witnesses that, uh, to what I'm saying today. 
you go back, you can listen to these messages. They are a witness of God to what's taking place every time that God has spoken about different things that I'm going to just address real quick, real briefly, and then move on. October 26, 2015. I told you about when I was in the third, the, uh, uh, the, the physical therapist's office where God showed me the clock and it was just spinning. Our hand was just, just flying around and around and it just disturbed me. But I had to have an open vision and God was showing me time was speeding up. I had just been talking about time speeding up. But God showed me the time is speeding up in the natural, and he has the ability to speed it up in the, in the spiritual. And so God is causing things to come together real, real quick. Have you noticed how quick we're almost in the eighth month of 2022? Mm -hmm. And so that was a vision from God showing, amen, that time has been speeded up <laughs> in the natural and in the supernatural. I told you about it as I went to, I, I believe in, in North Carolina to bury my aunt. I was asked to come and preach her funeral in, in, in LA. You know, God has amazing things sometimes in store we have no idea of. So I went through Charlotte, North Carolina. Amen. As I was standing there looking at the TV screen. Amen. And, I, and that time, uh, uh, Trump was running for president and God spoke these words to me. And God says, he is not able to lead. He cannot lead. I was standing beside of a woman. She looked at me, and we were not having a conversation, and she says, this man has no idea what he's saying. He can't lead. She said, because I just retired out of the government, it takes so many people to cooperate and work together in order for a president to really lead. And that's all we said there. And I went on about my business, preached my aunt's funeral. Amen. I wanted to come back. Had to come back through New York City. Amen. The plane, when I got on the plane, amen, as I said to you before, the plane was one hour behind schedule. The pilot says, when we get to Phoenix, we will make up one hour. God wanted me to be on that plane because he wanted me to show me in the natural and in the spiritual, I'm going to cause them to work together. And that's what God's doing today. Amen. So when we got to Phoenix, guess what? We were exactly, we were exactly, we were on time. Amen. When he came on the last week, he said, we have made up that one hour. That was God taking those two answers and showing me what I'm doing in the future. Amen. Now, get this. This is God. This is not something a man can do, a woman. This has to be by the Spirit. Amen. Now, in July 3rd, 2016, I have been preached about this. I think I may have just briefly talked about this, but it's very scary. Amen. I'll tell you why it's so scary, because in July the 3rd, 2016, I saw a bomb go off and destroy everything around. It was a nuclear bomb. I saw people's flesh dissolving. Amen. And I dove, dove under the water. That's the only way I escaped. Amen. I know God has a way for us to escape if he wants us to escape. Amen. And so... Uh, we know today, uh, and we know today, we, we had the terrorists that hit New York City, hit the Twin Towers, and we know the chaos that that caused in America. And uh, coming up very soon, and what, what is that, uh, 20, 2021, 2001, 9-11, uh, I think so. And uh, so we know what the uh, devastation it caused in our nation, the, the financial de devastation, the, all the different things, such confusion and also death. Amen. But I'll tell you what's coming to this country, that country next. It will not be somebody trying to hit the Twin Towers with an airplane. It will be nuclear weapons. Amen. Let's drop, amen, bombs on our nation. Amen. I hate to say that. I'm not preaching a gloom and doom. It is gloom and doom. It is awful. But I'm telling you what God is saying. Can you just imagine what's going to take place in this nation when that does take place? When that does take can you imagine the chaos and confusion and the deaths in our nation? And it won't be just one city. It'll be Fort Bragg. You know, it, it'll be uh, uh, probably California. Amen. All these things. The enemy's not going to hit, just be hit. He's going to tr try to strategically hit. Amen. Hawaii. Remember when the Japan, Japan hit Hawaii? They hit a strategic place in America. They hit the Hawaiian Islands. Again, America 
was uh, in a lot of disarray. But we had a president at that time, President Roosevelt, that was a man that was seasoned and a man that had, amen, some wisdom, amen, that knew how to pull everything together. And by the grace of God, amen, we were able to overcome the enemy, amen. That was then, but this is now, amen. So, uh, again, uh, as we, uh, I said, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Trump came into office, uh, when he did come into office, I said, one of the things, one of the things God showed me, he, sh he wanted to shut down all the news networks. He didn't want anybody to oppose him. Amen. I talked about that large pipe in the, in the White House that was cut from end to end. Amen. And so uh, now I'm going to just briefly talk about the dreams and vision that God gave me through 2016 through 2020 which has to do with the White House, amen. 2017, the Lord showed me in his time of office, in the very beginning of his office, God showed me in 2017, amen, in a four-way stop sign and a dream. God showed me that great destruction was coming and I didn't know at the time it was a virus, okay? I did not know that, but I saw graveyards and I saw tombstones and I saw people uh, just massive graves been dug, been dug out by bulldozers in New York City. I saw uh, trailer trucks, 18 wheelers, been piled, just, just uh, all kind of bodies been piled into them. Now, we saw this on national television. This is not something. I, I spoke this before it ever happened. Amen. Because God was saying, are you listening to me? That's the reason God was saying, these messages that was preached are a witness to what I'm about to say today about woe, about this woe of judgment coming upon America. And so that took place, amen, that took place as the virus hit America and many lives began to be lost. <laughs> Millions, over a million lives were lost. <coughs> Still many people are suffering today from that virus, amen? So I'm painting you a picture now of what took place as God gave these prophetic dreams and visions in our nation. Then it brings me also to uh, all right. So brings me to September 28, 2020, 2020. And I paint the picture <clears throat> because these are the things that God said that's come to pass. September 28th, 2020. The Lord speaking then of President Trump at that time. God said he's finished. Now you may look at they and say he's not finished. When God says you're finished, you're finished. You may kick up dust. You may like, like, like Saul. But Saul was killed in the midst of battle. And I told you the dream that God gave me September 28, 2020. This very tall tree in the forest, which was represented from the then President Trump. Amen. And I saw this, this tree just escalating in the midst of the forest. And all these other uh, tall trees was around him. But you know, and I, I just, I thought to myself, God, why did, why did you choose me? Why why did you show me this, Lord? Amen. But uh, again, God showed me another dream. And God, not only in this dream, but God told me to do a prophetic act. I don't know if you've ever done a prophetic act in a dream or not, but I'm speaking what God said. And so God had me do a prophetic act, and, and I looked down and there was a chainsaw in my hand. I took that chainsaw and I cut, amen, the tree down. I cut it down. Amen. Through all the dreams that, that I had in those four years, I was always talking to President Trump. Amen. The things that he was doing was not right. What was taking place? And so I cut that tree down. And when I cut it down, probably two or three feet from the ground, and then it, it, it went over and then it, hit, hit, uh, it fell on the other trees that was in the forest. Now you say, how can, well, I just tell you what I saw. Amen. And then I looked at the trunk, the, the trunk itself. And this was an amazing thing to me because, and I looked at it and it was absolutely decayed. It was corrupt. There was no life in it. And I took my left hand and I hit that, that, that tree trunk. And it just, just like hitting powdered dust. It just fogged and right down to the ground. It was all dead. 
I looked up to the tree that was leaning diagonally across the other trees, and I saw this hollow section all the way through this tree. That's what God said he was. He's hollow. There's no substance to it. Amen. So God showed me that. Amen. I released that. And uh, there's some other things that God said about that, but you have to go back and look at the message. So God said, I have removed him. We know that he contaminated others. He's contaminated the population. He's contaminated other people that's just as corrupt as he is. I'm trying to lead this nation. You know, God says I raised him up and I set him down. Amen. God permitted him to be raised up, but I'll just leave it there. Now, I give you today, I remind you uh, from the Lord because he's right now beginning to talk about I am still in control. I'm still in control. Again, I will remind you, Amos 3, 7. <coughs> the Lord would do nothing, but he revealed to his servants his, his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Now we see prophets, maybe apostles, all over the world, all over the country that God is speaking to about what's going on in the world. God's not going to let things go on and catch us by surprise. He's going to expose what's going on. He's going to expose the enemy. He's going to expose the government. He's going to expose leadership. Come on. He's going to expose the church. Are you listening to me? Now, I'm going to be coming to the church. Amen. So in 2021, and I'm speaking again, speaking of things yet to come. In 2021, you have to realize what I'm saying here now. In 2021, unbeknownst to me, I didn't know God was going to do this on this particular day. Amen. I was watching the news, as most of the time I do in the morning, to see what's going on in our country or in our state. And as I was sitting there, I saw the word Russia in red going across the screen just continuously, just like, just like it was on a, on a globe or something. Around and around it went, and around and around and I didn't see, I, I was just seeing perfectly. I was seeing the news, I was seeing the man, I was seeing the woman, but I saw the word Russia in red continue to run across the screen. You know, like uh, when you have, have an emergency thing, sometimes it run across the bottom of your screen. You know, a storm, storm in the area, things like that, you know. And that, that's, that's what it was, I said, this is running in the very middle of the screen. And I thought, man, that sure is odd. They're not saying anything about Russia. Why is that? Mm -hmm. You know, so it got me very curious. And I, so after I, I just, after the program was off, I, of course, I always record things. So I backed up my recorder and I ran it across, all across again. And the word Russia did not come on anymore. I knew that was supernatural. Mm -hmm. I knew God was giving me an open, an open vision. Are you getting me now? Mm -hmm. This is not me. This is God. Amen. He is saying something. So, in 2020, as I said, 2021, God said, amen, across the He didn't give no information. He just showed the word Russia. Now, we know in 2022 that Russia began to invade Ukraine. Isn't that right? Ukraine. We know that NATO. We know that America, amen, uh, is standing with Ukraine. We're sending a lot of military supplies and things of that nature. And it's a very fearful time in the world, amen. And I thought, is Russia going to stop? My prayer was, is Russia going to stop? Are they going to stop? President Biden is saying, we are not allow him, amen, to go any further. Now, those words have been said, they will have to be backed up. We're going to watch what's going to play out. We don't know. But I know that Ukraine needs our prayers. They need our prayers to protect them. And... All the NATO nations are very concerned about Russia not stopping where they're at, and very well they may not. Amen. I said very well they may not because I think we're dealing with an insane man. Amen. Just like Hitler. Amen. So God is, <clears throat> this day, God has given the kingdom from the kingdom of God. He has given voice to the trumpet to speak to our nation and speak to, speak to those this morning that will hear what God is saying. Now, from 2015 to today, it's almost been seven years 
that God began to speak about time and about our nation and things taking place. Seven, seven short years have almost come to pass. Now think about that. My God, that's just a blink. What lies ahead in the years ahead? Amen. Amen. Ever how long that may be. Amen. And so war is coming to our nation. Did you hear me? War. And listen, I feel in my spirit, it's not far off. I said, what else I felt about this when God said it? There was an urgency in my spirit to speak. There was such an urgency to come before you today and talk about what God is saying. Amen. That's the reason I asked Pastor Edward if it's okay to take his place today. An urgency. An urgency. Come on. When there is an urgency, urgency, something is about to happen. Amen. I prayed. I've already, I've already prayed. God, whatever is coming, temper it with your mercy. Yes. Temper it with your mercy. Yes. Amen. Yes. If we're here, temper it with your mercy. If we're not here, temper it with your mercy today. Thank you, Lord. Now, we know today, because of people, because of politics, it is very sad. Uh, let me say this right now, because this goes by one of our spiritual daughters. I think it texted my wife and said she had a dream last night that she was, you know, she's going in between churches, I think, right now. And she said, uh, uh, I don't remember a whole thing she said, but the thing that, that, I, that I got was that uh, she looked up and she saw Jesus coming in the sky. Is that right? Jesus coming in the sky. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the Bible said, look up, thy redemption draweth nigh. When we see all these things up on the earth, when we see all these things coming, Look up our redemption, Jordan. I. Saints, we've got an awesome responsibility to try to tell the world they need to come to Jesus. We've got an awesome responsibility, amen, more so this day than every time, any other time in our life. But the enemy has done a very tricky job. He's tried and been successful in many ways trying to divide the church over politics. Over politics. I am not going to fight with you about politics. I'll say what God says, and I'll leave it there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the enemy has tried, and it's been successful. Leaders in the churches are divided and dividing God's people over politics. Amen. But what's the kingdom of God saying today? God's kingdom doesn't divide his church. Come on now. God's kingdom does not divide his church. But man, politics will do that. Amen. So political leaders in churches, amen, are dividing the body of Christ. Amen. It's hard to go to a church today, amen, but, but without there being division about who they are serving, who are they voted for, what difference does it make? Come on, somebody. We're serving another kingdom, another God, amen, in his name is Jesus Christ today. Now, as the virus has killed millions, over a million in America, and millions throughout the world, Amen. But let me tell you something. God says this. Some Christians, and maybe all of us, may face the judgment that's coming upon this earth. We're facing this virus. Amen. But First Peter 4 and 17, and I remember God saying this to me when I was in Africa. I was sitting in Apostle Samuelson in the office. I heard God so plainly. No, that was before. That's trip before. I was sitting in the office. And I heard God say this, this thing. Uh, that judgment is coming to the body of Christ in Africa. Uh, so, God don't want us to be lost. He wants to be refined, doesn't he? But listen to this. Now, Peter said this some over 2,000 years ago. How much more? It's always is relevant in every generation, every church. It is relevant. For it is time. He said, it is time. Well, if it's time, that means things have been going on that people are not dealing with. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. Are you listening, Jenny? All the things the church has been doing, going through, God said it's time for judgment to come to the family of God. And it is begin with us. If it begins with us, if judgment begins getting our lives in, in order, getting our lives straightened out, amen, Doing things right. 
if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Wow. So the judgment begins in the house of God. Let me talk about some things now. Judgment in the house of God. Oh, it's so likely uh, thought about today. People can do anything they want to and nobody's opposed to it. Are you listening to me? Come to church, pay your tithes. We, everything's all right. Amen. But one of the things in the church of God that God wants to take place is discipline in people's lives. Discipline. You know what discipline means? It means you need to get your act together. You need to quit living an ungodly life. You need to quit saying you're Christian and living like the devil. Amen. Accountability in the house of God. Accountability that also has to be with many ministers today. There's no accountability. Come on. There's no accountability. And God's been doing a lot of weeding in people's lives. Been trying to get them to straighten out because he's trying to bring holiness into their walk. Separation. Amen. To walk with God. Justice. Justice. She need to be in the house of God. Come on, somebody. This, some church, there's no justice in churches. Justice. And this, this is not talking about what the devil has done. It's about what the church has done. No justice. No integrity. No purity. Think about it. Talking about the church. No integrity. No purity. That's the mandate of God. More responsibility. I, I know when I'm in the workforce and I would work for, there were people and, and they would, they were, they were living with people, they won't, they won't, they won't marry to them, they were living with them. So I'm going to church today. Now it's one thing to go to church, but you're living in, you're living in immorality. Come on somebody. It's not preached. It's not preached against. Come on somebody. It's not, amen, you can't preach against something you're doing yourself. So there's a lot of blind Christians today. Now, a lot of people don't think God can judge them. They don't think like everything's going to be all right. Just I'm just going to get out of here. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about it. But you know what? I got news for you. Let's look at some things. Let's look at some things. That's a question now to the church. Not to the world, but to the church. I heard somebody like you recently say uh, that we know it says uh, now that we we we've, we've gotten we've gotten the the, the 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 abortion law changed, now God's not now we don't have to worry about these things. Amen. A curse, the curse is still here. You want to tell you why the curse is still here? Let me speak it to you. It's because of the church. Amen. How can God? Let me ask you a question. How can God judge lust when the church? Is full of lust. Did you get that? How can God judge lust of a nation when God, when the church has not dealt with lust in the church? Got some astonishing things when I went back and began to look at this. Warning again to America. We live in America. Judgment is coming in war. Deep suffering. Now, I thought of an astonishing thing. I'm about to give you some some. Uh, figures and things uh, that they've uh, it will it will it will shock you. It will let you understand why uh, there's no signs, wonders, and miracles much in the church. Amen. It's let you understand why uh, people are are very uh, well. Just let's, let's look at it this way. Amen. In the survey that I looked at, it says that 34 of the women, 34 percent of the women in the church, 37 percent. Of pastors, get this now: thirty-four percent women, thirty-nine percent, thirty-seven percent pastors, and sixty-five percent men in the church struggle with or intensely look at pornography. Now think about that. What kind of church can it be that this? These people are going to church. Now, people say God won't judge it. God, we want God to judge abortion in our nation. And yet we don't deal with abortion in the church. Come on. 
Yes, help us, Lord. Let me give you some figures. Now, look at this. I want you to listen to this. We want God to judge America. How can God judge America, America when he, amen, we don't, we, don't, we don't want God to judge the church. 43% of the women that, that have abortions are Protestant in the church, in the Pentecostal churches, in the Protestant churches. 27% of the Catholic women have abortions. That's 70% women in the church. Are you listening to me? We won't judge. We won't, ju we won't sex your sins to be judged. Listen to me. We won't sex your sins to be judged. And rightly they should. But until we dealt with sexual sins in the church, listen now, 45%, 45, 45 of Christians are involved in some sexual, sexual way that's inappropriate. 45%. And 23% in the church are outside uh, that uh, are having uh, extramarital outside of the marriage. 23% call themselves Christians. Now, this is alarming. This is alarming. You look at churches, mega churches, a thousand members. I wonder how many of them are, what, what's going on in the body of Christ? You go to church, you listen to a message, you clap, you put your hands up. But I dare say I believe because of the power of God. Amen. God is going to start, amen, coming and doing some very traumatic things in the body of Christ. Now, we don't like what we see going on in the world. And we want God to judge the world for the materialism and the greediness in the world. But how about the materialism and greed in the church? Come on. They have millions and millions. I looked at one man. He had something like $10, $11 million right before he died. I went, oh, what kind of, I wish I had that kind of problem to use it for the kingdom of God. Yes. Why? To use it for the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. Yes, I don't mind having some savings. Yes, I don't mind for a rainy day. But nobody needs $10 million. Amen. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so, again, that's, where's the problem lie? The, the problem lies with the church. The problem, it's so important to think to the world, let's point to the church. Because God points to the church. I said God points to the church. I'm going to point to the church today. Found in Second Chronicles, you know it well. You know it well, but Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people. You notice he didn't say people in the world. He said if my people who are called by my name. Called by my name. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Who God sent to this world to die for our sins. Amen. If my people, if there's an if clause in that. If they will pray. If they will, if they will, if they, those called by name, if they'll humble themselves. Yes, yes, yes. You know, there's not a whole lot of humility in the church. If they will humble themselves and pray, what? Pray mm -hmm. and seek my face. Seek his face, yes. Are you about the kingdom today? Does the kingdom make any difference in your life? If the kingdom makes a difference, then the world will make a difference. Yes. Amen. Because you'll be saved concerned for the lost. I'm concerned for the church this morning and I'm concerned for the lost. We got a young lady that we led to the Lord uh, uh, years ago when we went to, to uh, this week to have some lunch with Gary and Lisa. And she's getting ready to go to New York City on vacation. And I said, you better be careful. You better be careful. And I'm just giving a, a word of caution. And she said, it scares me when you say this. I said, come here and let's pray. And we took her by the hand around the table. We prayed with her. And she called me Papa and called my wife Mama. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We prayed with her. And she said, you know, I just have goosebumps all over me. That's the power of God's spirit. Mm -hmm. We prayed for safety for God for her to go there and come back. Because 
New York City is a very dangerous place, especially if you're an outsider and never been there. But let me finish with this. Pray and seek my face and turn from their... He's talking to the church. Yes. He says you have such wicked ways. I just, I just, just said, I just went over some of the wicked ways that's in the church. Hello? Mm -hmm. Wicked ways in the church. Then, then, only then, God said, I will hear from heaven yeah. and I will f forgive their sin and heal their land. The land is left. The land, the, the, the land is the last thing that God comments about. If you get yourself changed with God, if you get things right in your life, yes. if you walk upright with me, then I will begin to heal the land that you walk in. Mm -hmm. That's what God said. God wrote his word to the church. Mm -hmm. To the church. The responsibility of the church not only to themselves, to God, and to the world. Yes. Amen. And so, you know, beyond our earthly parents, there's one that knows our name. Our co-workers may know us. Our children know us. We know our children's name. But God knows our name this morning. Does he? I said God knows our name this morning. Mm -hmm. And when we... When, when, and, when would the Lord say to the church, when would, when would the Lord say to the church, I have heard your prayers. Yes. I have heard your prayer. Can you write, can you remember going throughout the, the, the word of God and God would say, I have heard your prayers. I have heard your prayers. Amen. I've heard your prayers. Amen. I want God to hear our prayers. Yes, yes. To hear our prayers. The Bible tells us also to examine ourselves to see if there be any wicked way in us. What? He said wicked way. God is very concerned about wickedness in our lives. Amen. We can't escape the word of God. We can't escape the hand of God. Let me read a few more scriptures as we're closing with this. Uh, Joel, I know this is talking about maybe a different time, but it's still the same. Joel too. Joel 1 verses 3. Joel chapter, excuse me, Joel number 3, chapter 3. Joel chapter 3, 12 and 13 verse. Let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will set, I will set to judge all the nations on every side. S swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come and trample the grapes. For the wine press is full and the vat overflowing. So great is the wickedness. Amen. So God, there is a harvest coming and we don't know how this harvest is going to come about. One of the harvests is coming about right now as soldiers go to battle. I believe even though soldiers go, soldiers go to battle to fight against evil forces, I believe a lot of times they are making sure that they're right with God. And they may go on home to be with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Their life was not, it was not in vain when they went to fight the enemy. Amen. But listen, what is coming up on America today? Will we be ready? We'll be ready. Amen. If God has not come and, and, and taken us home, will we be ready to face what is coming? Yeah. And will we be ready? Amen. To gather in the harvest. Amen. But you know what? I'm blowing the trumpet for the Lord. Amen. Blowing the trumpet for the Lord. <clears throat> so God wants, first of all, the church to repent. And then he wants America to repent. Amen. He wants us to turn to God. And the dead enough denominations may never turn to God. But I hope they can be woke up. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible tells us in John, the ninth chapter, the fourth verse, all of us, talking us right now, this very moment, this very hour, right now, today, tomorrow, next day, next week, every day that God grants us to live, he's talking to us right now. Amen. We own God's time. We own kingdom time. Amen. And so in John, the ninth chapter, the fourth verse, <clears throat> 
all of us must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent me. This is Jesus speaking. Yes. Because he's saying this. For there is, there is a little time. He spoke this 2,000 years ago and said there's little time, saints, there's little time left before the night falls and all the work comes to an end. When the bombs, when the nuclear bombs begin to fall, I'm telling you, there's going to be devastation like you have never even dreamed of. It's going to just, one bomb is just going to destroy cities, wipe it clean. Amen. Nobody's going to be left. Are you listening to me? Amen. People say, well, that can't happen in America. Well, that's exactly what Israel said. This can't happen in Israel. But God said, it will happen, and I will show you it will happen. Amen. And we'll, today, we are the body of Christ as I sound this trumpet. I want to go back and read one more thing to you. And I thought this, this was uh, just real needful in closing uh, because this is a rebellious nation, because the church has much rebellion in it. Great destruction is coming from, from the enemy, uh, and there's such a sense of urgency. Let's read this out of Isaiah, the first chapter, one through the seventh verse. Uh, again, a prophetic message to the nation that he will both cut off the sprigs and the pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches of his people. This far removed powerful nation, that is, he will prune his people and cut away the unprofitable, ungodly, wicked, diseased, and spiritually sick branches in order to save the tree itself and, and purge it that it may bring good fruit forth. Now in that 16th verse in Isaiah 1 and 16, God thunders from heaven and commands his people to repent. Here again, it is speaking to God's people. I, I command you to repent of the wicked ways. Again, he uses the word wicked. The wicked ways and foolish hearts and turn to him now while there is yet time before the final threshing of the earth and its inhabitants. There's coming a final threshing. Amen. I don't want to be here in that final threshing. I don't want to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God is saying to us, it's time to be about the Father's business. Yes, yes, it's time for us, amen, to, 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 to get our lives in order with the word of God. Amen. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, I was going today. I was going this morning. I got up this morning as I always do when I'm going to preach. I was still talking to God. I still want to know God. Am I saying everything that you want me to say? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Am I saying everything that you want me to say? And then God, I just turned the Bible and I looked down and I thought, God, I, I'm just going to read this to you this morning. In closing, this is found. You've heard me speak of this before. But I'm going to read it because God turned the word of God there. He turned the pages there. And I looked down because I'm talking to God. Am I, have I said everything? And this, I hope, will grab a hold of your heart and cause you to look up and say, Lord, I need to change. Yes, yes. I, need to ch I, quit, I need to quit looking away. I need to quit pretending that things are right when they're not right. Amen. And so I'm going to read out of Isaiah, the fifth chapter, excuse me, Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. Now, it says not one here is upright, but you know, that's not true because Jeremiah was here, Isaiah was here, uh, Ezekiel was here, uh, Zechariah was here, Habakkuk was here, 
These are godly men, but here, but listen, if you read the scriptures, these men were not, well, these men was not enough to stay the hand of God's judgment. Did you get that? They were not enough to stay the hand of God's judgment. Amen. But God did take them through. And this, I love, God did take them through. Amen. Go up and, listen now, go up and down the streets of Jerusalem and look around and consider and search through our squares if you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. Although they say as surely as the Lord lives, till they are still they are swearing falsely. O oh Lord, do not your eyes look for truth? You struck them, but they do. Listen, he said you struck them and they felt no pain. Maybe there was, a, there was something that happened there before, before, uh, before uh, Nebuchadnezzar came. They didn't feel a thing. They didn't feel a thing. Oh, Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. You struck them, but they don't feel no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Is this where the church is at? Is this where America is at today? They made their faces, they made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. I thought, these are only the poor, they're foolish. For they do not know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. So I would go to the leaders and speak to them. And Jeremiah did that. Sure they didn't know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest will attack them, and a wolf in the desert will ravage them. A leopard will lie in wait for their towns to tear to pieces any who venture out, for their rebellion is great, and their backslide is many. Listen to the tone of the word. Why should I forgive you? Your children have forsaken me, and sworn by gods that are not gods. I supplied all their needs, yet they commit adultery. Are y'all listening to this? Yes. This, is, this is the church in America. And thrones to the house of, listen, and thrown to the house of prostitutes. They are well fed, lusty stallions, each need for another man's wife. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? He's not looking over in Africa. He's not looking at Tehran. He's not looking at Iraq. He's looking at this nation. Go through our vineyards and ravage them, but do not destroy them completely. Strip off from branches, for these people do not belong to the Lord. The house of Israel and the house of Jacob have been utterly unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. But again, listen to this. They have lied about the Lord. They say he would do nothing. That's the attitude today. God won't do anything. America's all right. We're safe. The church is safe. No harm will come to us. I've had, I've had leaders, I've had apostles to ask me, did I think that people would die in America for serving God? I said, absolutely, I do. Amen. Absolutely. It's a possibility. We will never see sword or famine. The prophets are but when, and the word is not in them. So let what they say be done to them. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty God says, because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth a fire, and these words the people it consumes. O house of Israel declares the, declares the Lord, I am bringing a distant nation against you, an ancient and enduring nation, a people's language who you do not know, whose speech you do not understand. Their quivers are full like an open grave. All of them are mighty warriors. They will devour your harvests and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds, devour your vines and your fig trees. With the sword they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Yet even in those days, declares the Lord, 
I will not destroy you completely. And when the people ask, why has the Lord our God done all these to us? You will tell them, as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods yes. in your own land. Yes. So now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. And now since the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. I pray right now that God would give you ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. Should you not fear me? Should you not fear me? Where is the fear of the Lord in the house of God? Should you not fear me? People can do anything, anyway. Preachers can do anything, anyway. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord. Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sands of the boundaries of the sea an everlasting barrier cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have but these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. And that's the problem, the heart. They have turned aside and gone away. Do not they do not say to themselves, they do not say to themselves. Let us fear the Lord our God. Think about that. Who gives autumn and spring rains and season. Who assures us of the regular weeks, weeks of harvest. Your, your wrongdoings, listen to this, your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of the good. In other words, God said just you, your sins will affect your crops coming in. Amen. Amen. We hear about the grape crops been, uh, you know, affected or, or the corn crop or the wheat crop. What is that all about? That's about the sins in America. Yes. And my, among my people, listen, we see this. We see this so fully right now. Among my people are wicked men who are like, wake, like men who snare birds and like those who set traps to catch men, like cages full of birds, their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful and have grown fat and sleek. Their evil deeds have no limits. I said their evil deeds have, there's nothing they won't do. Their evil deeds have no limit. They do not plead the case of the fatherless to win it. They do not defend the rights of the poor. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord. I am closing last few verses. Should not I, should says, my challenge to you, what will you do in the end? 
You're not going to have a whole lot of time when things start happening. Well, I'll just repent. You can go down the road and get killed in a car accident tomorrow. Isn't that right? And so much of this happening today. Now, this is my, my uh, today, my prophetic word is I'm, I preach this. I've laid this out for you. Uh, God said there the are other words, there are other scriptures, there are other dreams that he's given me. Other words that he's given me, he said, I did not, did not I verify them? Did not I prove that they were for me? And God said, did not I say that they are a witness against you today? If you hear and you do not listen, you do not obey, obey, obey my voice, my sounding, my trumpet, my warning, I will not stand before God and have your blood on my hands because I've obeyed the Lord. And I obey it in humility, in humility. It does not please me, but I want to please the Lord. Somebody has to give God a voice in the earth. Somebody has to give God's kingdom a voice in the earth, a right voice, not a lying voice, not a corrupt voice, not a, a voice that speaks lies, but a voice that speaks truth and honors the Lord the best of their ability. So I'll leave this with you. I thank you for your attention. May God bless you, may he keep you, and may this message make a difference in your life the rest of your life. If you have things that's wrong, if you have things that's not right, I pray that you would get it right, that you would get, get these things, go before God and get them changed. Go before the Lord and humble yourself and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. And God says, I will, I will heal you. And then I will begin to heal the land that you walked in, said the Lord. Thank you, I'm going to pray. Father, heavenly Father, as we come before you today, as I'm releasing these words, Lord, wherever they may go, that your people may take them to heart, that they may share them with others. Share them with others. Lord Jesus, because we believe that you're coming soon. Lord Jesus, let us be about the Father's business. Lord, that reach the loss for Jesus Christ. But first of all, let us, Almighty God, come before you. Lord, and let our hearts be searched. Search us, O oh Lord, David said, and see if there's any wicked ways in us. Again, that word, amen, keeps coming up over and over again, Lord. And so, Father, I pray for your people. I pray for those that they may speak to, that, Lord, that he will cause them to turn to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday night in Jesus' name.